So how about this, Matt? Pull out your Bible, look at the Ten Commandments, compare it to the history of colonization, and then when you're done, you tell us how it was noble. You see, as human beings, we all need to repent and let colonization serve as a reason as to why we need Jesus, because we all have the capability to have extreme levels of cognitive dissonance where we swear that we love him, but yet an entire side of us is filled with evil, darkness, thirst for power, greed, and in many ways, blood. We all need to repent and we all need to separate ourselves from the sins of our ancestors. And the scriptures say what the enemy intended for evil, God will use for good, but never get it twisted. Just because God has the ability to take evil and make good out of it does not mean that it wasn't evil. And if you're not able to make that distinction, you have a lot more praying to do and you need a lot more Jesus than you currently have. So I saw this video on the majority report and I could not believe my ear. I'm not quite shocked. And this video guys I'm going to be reacting to is going to be exactly why I continue to tell you guys that God is not a Democrat nor a Republican, nor a Republican, okay? So I wanna get into this video by Matt Walsh. I believe that's what his name is. He is a commentator on the Daily Wire and he had some choice words in regards to colonization. Let's hear him and then we'll get back to my commentary. Colonization was a good thing they did. The conquest and colonization and settling of this land was overall a good and noble and courageous thing. It is good that it happened and we should be grateful for it. The people who came here and claimed this land were heroes. It was heroic. And they were heroes not because of the other good stuff, but because they came and claimed it. For hundreds of years, this would not have been controversial to say. It would have been perhaps the least controversial thing to say. And now you're not allowed to say it at all. Matt, 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 where do we begin? Okay, so this is, this is the first thing I'm gonna say. This is people who think like this and talk like this, I don't care what anyone says, they serve mammon. You see, there's this, there's this thing going on, especially when it comes to many Republicans. When you see people talk like this, I don't care what you say. These are people that Christ is not at the center of their life. They may be religious, but Christ is not the center of their life. So because immediately when I heard Matt's comment, I understood very quickly, okay, Christ is not the center of your life. Your religion may be, your political views may be but not Jesus himself. Jesus is not the center of your life because if Jesus was the center of your life, you would have way more wisdom than this. You'd have way more empathy than this. Matter of fact, you'd even offer way more repentance than this. The reason I can speak in this way is because for many of these conservatives, they call themselves believers in Christ. They call themselves Christians. Well, I'm a believer in Christ. So as a believer in Christ, I can speak on this and speak on this with great authority because I know when it comes to me, I know that I am not an ambassador for the Democratic Party. I know that I'm not an ambassador for the Republican Party. I know that I am an ambassador for the kingdom of God. And though we as human beings can be very imperfect, that's part of our nature as being humans, but nonetheless, the kingdom that we're submitted to is going to have to do a lot with the morality that we possess as human beings. Who we answer to is going to have a lot to do with how we see our behavior and how we judge and correct our behavior. And obviously with his views, he saw nothing wrong with it because he's not surrendered to the kingdom of God. He's surrendered to the kingdom of mammon. This made me look into Matt Walsh's faith. Cause I said, this is such an immoral way of thinking. I needed to understand what his religious background was because his, a lot of his morality will be derived from his religious background. So when I look it up, Matt Walsh is actually a Catholic. I was like, oh my goodness, this makes sense. If any of you guys know the history of the Catholic church, then you know that the Catholic church had a big involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. Matter of fact, for a very long time, the institution of the Catholic church did not recognize slavery to be an immoral act at all whatsoever. Matter of fact, there are many voyages that the Catholic priests blessed. And at the time, you have to remember that there were five major countries that played an important role in that transatlantic slave trade, being Spain, 
Portugal, France, England, and the Netherlands. So, and many of these nations, their powers that be were Catholic. That was their faith. They were devoted Catholic. So in many ways they excused it or justified it with their faith as well. Matt is so out of touch with the body of Christ is not even funny. And when I say the body of Christ, I mean the entire body of Christ. If you are going to represent the body of Christ, there's a level of sensitivity that you have to have for humanity. At the end of the day, God is not interested in the growth of your political party. That's not his number one priority. What God is interested in is the growth of his kingdom. See, God is in the business of saving souls. And where Matt Walsh is out of touch is he doesn't understand that there is a large degree of people who have been colonized, as he said, that was a good thing, that because of the history of colonization and the fact that those colonizers, they dressed themselves up in disguise and pretended to be coming in the name of Jesus Christ, that there is an entire group of people that are forever doomed to eternal damnation because of the simple fact that they cannot receive Christ. The reason they cannot receive Christ, because when they think about the atrocities that happened to their ancestors, all they think about is the fact that one race that they know of continued to essentially oppress them. That's the perspective that they have. And they have historical data and historical timelines to just show just the treatment that they've received over time. And the devil is so, man, when I tell you the devil is such a crafty, 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 crafty being, slavery was always a part of humanity. Slavery was always a part of humanity. Um, if you go back to the history of the Hebrew children, at one point they were slaves. But the one thing you don't have a history of is the Hebrew children building economy off of slavery. And as I said, this is the problem when you serve mammon and not God. And this is exactly why in scripture that God says that you cannot serve two gods. He said that you cannot serve God and money. You will love one and hate the other. You will be devoted to one and you will despise the other. I believe in this instance, we're seeing someone that is completely devoted to power. They are completely devoted to conquest. They are completely devoted to money and completely devoted to ambition. When you are truly serving the creator of heaven and earth, he's going to dial that down. Does not mean that God does not intend for his people to prosper. Yes, he surely does. But see, there's a way in which that happens. There's a way in which he honors it. And it's not slavery. It's just not. That is not how God elevates his people. That is not the mission that he gives them to go across this earth and enslave people and beat the faith of Jesus Christ into them. That's not how it works. Even though I believe that there were many slaves that already had faith in Jesus Christ prior to even being introduced into European colonizers, the reality is this is the disconnect that so many people that are that call themselves conservatives, this is the problem that they have and honestly is rooted and that immoral, that decaying way of thinking and being. In the scriptures, there's a scripture, this is Matthew 23, 27. Um, in that scripture, it says, woe to you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of bones of the dead and everything unclean. That is what Matt Walsh is. Matt Walsh is filled with bones of the dead and everything unclean to say such a thing when when if you were truly working if you are truly an ambassador for the kingdom of god then you would have a level of wisdom in terms of communicating with the world this would be an opportunity for repentance. This would be an opportunity to build a bridge, but no, instead you just decided to plant your flag and simply just say there was absolutely nothing wrong with the way things went about and the way things occurred. And matter of fact, it was the no most noble thing that could happen is the most noble thing that you know could have been done as a people. Well, let's check that nobility. See, when people are extremely religious, they live by the law, okay? Not by grace, but by the law. And when you live by the law, what is the law that you would live by? Well, it would be the Ten Commandments. So let's not judge what happened by my thoughts or my opinions or my commentary. Let's judge the history of colonization by the law. So let's look at that law. 
So when we look at the Ten Commandments, there's ten laws. Number one is thou shalt not have no other gods. Clearly your God was money. Clearly your God was power. That's the only reason why they went across the earth to basically take human bodies and sell them for money and for labor and for power. And he used the word conquest, okay? So strike one, no graven images or likenesses. Well, we're talking about colonizers who not only went through the process of enslaving people, but also went out of their way to take the image of Christ and make it in their own image so that their skin can be idolized. So strike two. Number three, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. You're talking about colonizers that literally had ships that were named Jesus. Jesus Christ that were used to go and harm People, what history in the scriptures do you ever see that Jesus got on a boat, rode on a donkey, rode on a horse, or got into any vehicle and it was for the purpose of basically inserting his dominance over people? Matter of fact, Christ says in his word that I send you out into this world as sheep amongst wolves. And he said, you are to be as wise as serpents, but as harmless as doves. So much so that in the scripture, he says that when you enter into a town, if you are not received, to dust the dust off your feet and essentially walk away. That's the Christ we serve. It is not some Christ that gets on a boat, names it himself, and then goes in there and basically begins to assert his dominance over people. He will walk away before he asserts his dominance over people. God, who is the creator of heaven and earth, has more of a right than anybody to force people to follow him, to force people to bow down to him, to force people to kiss his feet. He has more of the right than any human being, yet he does not handle humans in that way. Yet Matt Walsh says that this was the most noble thing that colonizers could have done. He goes on to say, remember the Sabbath day. Well, we know those colonizers weren't remembering any Sabbath day. They were too busy collecting slaves. Um, Let's go on. He said, honor thy father and thy mother. Who knows? Maybe the colonizers did that, or maybe they had really amazing parents that said, Hey, what you're doing there is wrong. But for argument's sake, we're going to assume that they did. We're, there we go. We have a green light there. Um, thou shall not kill. <laughs> That's the sixth commandment. Okay. Um, number seven, thou shall not commit adultery. Okay, well, we have colonizers that essentially used to grape these slaves. Is that not committing adultery? Oh my goodness, Lord. Um, number eight, thou shall not steal. Matt Walsh said in his own commentary that they claimed the land. They stole it. <laughs> thou shall not steal. Okay. Thou shall not bear false witness. Do we really need to get into bearing false witnesses? We have a lot of history about that. And then thou shall not covet. I love this one because a lot of people don't understand what covet means. So because a lot of people don't understand what covet means, let's get the definition of covet. Covet means yearn to possess or have something. So let's look at some synonyms for covet. Some synonyms for covet would be to crave, to have one's heart set on, to want. Do you think someone going across sea and looking at someone else's property and wanted it for themselves is that not coveting desiring other people's gold desiring other people's you know women their wives you know all these different things that is coveting so out of these 10 commandments we're talking about at least seven to eight of them already broken but pay attention to what he said what they did was noble noble in the name of who so let's look at the word noble I love this. So when you are noble, guys, noble is having or showing fine personal qualities or high moral principles and ideals. High moral principles, guys, and ideals. Well, when you are a Catholic like Matt Walsh, wouldn't that mean that you would be rating your morality on those 10 commandments? Oh my goodness. Well, Matt as a Catholic might say, well, I am saved by grace and I am no longer under the law. Okay, well, you know what? Let's look at colonialism outside of the Ten Commandments and let's look at it from the standpoint of grace. And what does Jesus say? When he was asked about those laws, the laws of Moses and what to follow, he says, well, you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The question now becomes, Matt Walsh, is colonization an example of loving thy neighbor 
as thyself. See, you guys have to be very careful with inserting God in a lot of your affairs, okay? Now, obviously there is a time for peace. There is a time for war. Politics is a way of life. And a lot of that has to do with the fallen state of the world. Okay. But let's not confuse wars that may be in protection, wars that may be in defense compared to things that are frivolous and things that simply happen because of the thirst and crave humans have to conquer each other and to have superiority over each other. There is a scripture in the book of Samuel. This is when the first king was selected for Israel. At the time, Samuel was a prophet. Um, this is, you can go to first Samuel chapter eight and the people of Israel wanted a king. What they say, they said, the other nations have a king and we want a king just like them. And Samuel, this displeased him because the children of Israel, the way they operated was God was their king and he had prophets among them and the prophets were the leaders. And they said, no, we want a king. And the scripture says that this displeased Samuel, but he went to God. He was a servant of God, but also a servant of the people. And he brought their request to God and said, this is what your people are saying. And God said, okay, no problem. You're going to grant them this king, but this is what you're going to say to them. You're going to let them know, warn them solemnly and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights. Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, this is what the king who will reign over you will claim as his rights. He will take your sons and make them serve with his chariots and horses, and they will run in front of his chariots. Some he will assign to be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and others to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and still others to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers for perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his attendants. He will take a tenth of your grain and of your vin and of your vintage and give it to his officials and attendants, your male and female servants and the best of your cattle and donkeys. He will take for his own house. He will take a tenth of your flocks and you yourselves will become his slaves. When that day comes, you will cry out for relief from the king you have chosen, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Then we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. When Samuel heard all that the people said, he repeated it before the Lord. The Lord answered, listen to them and give them a king. Then Samuel said to the Israelites, everyone go back to your own town. And this is when they came back, but basically the best of the best from their tribes. And this is how the next king was chosen. So let's not confuse what God wants for us with what we want for ourselves. The reality as human beings is that many of us desire a king. And the reality is, is that the way God created us is to serve under his banner. But for many human beings, they have a hard time doing that. They have a hard time cultivating that relationship with God so that they can have direct relations with him and take instructions from him. So instead they give that responsibility to other humans to be over them. And thus they allow themselves to be oppressed. Now the way of the world is this way. Let's be clear. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. And the insertion of colonization was simply just another sequel in the story of human beings just being stupid, seeking power, and having a desire to rule over one another. When they succeeded, they celebrated, and when they failed, they either disappeared or they figured out a way to survive anyways. This is the saga of being human. Even though you might find the good in it, the bad in it, whatever it may be. Understand there is a group of millions of people that colonization created a riff between them and God. And as a person that resembles that group, if you had the wisdom of Christ within you, you would have approached that with a certain level of empathy, a certain level of wisdom, and a certain level of grace when you addressed colonization. The reality is, is that there's historical data to show that even those same colonizers found themselves repenting later and hoped and prayed that God would forgive them. So to say that it was noble when they themselves, many of them sought repentance is a really big disconnect. So there's obviously some kind of legacy 
that you're looking to hold on to. There's obviously some kind of legacy that you don't want to die, but you're going to have to choose on what God do you serve? Do you serve the God of power? Do you serve the God of conquest? Do you serve the God of money? Or do you serve the true creator of heaven and earth, the true God that died on the cross for all of our sins? Because the language that came out of Matt Walsh's mouth shows that he is a person that is serving the former. And it leads me to wonder how many people that are in that political party that because they call themselves conservative, they have the false belief that they are serving the mighty God. They have a false belief that they are truly serving the creator of heaven and earth and representing him in a very desirable, in a very honorable way. There was no honor in what Matt had to say. I can't apologize for it because it's not mine to apologize for, but all I can simply do is rebuke it. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And it's time for many believers in the body of Christ, regardless of color, to stand against these things that are basically creating rifts between the people that God is trying to save and those people that are put in positions of power and influence and propping themselves as being instruments or being mouthpiece for the kingdom of heaven. And it's so important for members of body of Christ to stand up, those with wisdom and those with prophetic abilities to stand against this and make it very clear that is a viper speaking. So um, I cannot apologize for Matt's behavior or what he had to say, nor is it my position to. However, um, I do want to make it crystal clear that he does not speak for the kingdom of heaven. He speaks for the kingdom that he serves. And unfortunately, that has more to do with the morality of his faith and the morality of his religion. And the reality is, is that we serve a true living God, not a religion. So with that said, I'm going to leave you with a video from a pastor who can probably say it better than I can. The black church has become idolatrous because what we have done is we have wrapped blackness in cultural identity. So we have often been more black than biblical. We have decided that our color can trump Christ. And so we will endorse a political party who will endorse evil, say nothing about the evil of abortion, the evil of homosexuality, the evil of uh, misuse of government because of a race issue. The white church has become too Republican. You have wrapped too many, have wrapped our faith in the American flag. And when you go for a nationalistic faith, you have contaminated the gospel. Not because you're Republican, but because you've now made the nation subject to the wrong kingdom instead of the nation having to adjust to our king and his kingdom. God doesn't ride the backs of donkeys or elephants. He sits as king of kings. He sits as lord of lords. You can't be a good old boys club since we've received the kingdom that trumps politics, trumps class, trumps culture. What we need are some kingdomologists. We need some men and women who understand there's only one theme in the Bible. The, when you look at my study Bible and the Bible commentary at the bottom of it, it'll say, it'll say these words, advancing God's kingdom. There's only one theme in the Bible. The glory of God through the advancement of his kingdom. That's the only thing the Bible talks about. You leave that subject and the Bible becomes doctrines and theologies and theories and stories and narratives and parables without a linking thing. So if you're going to serve your political party, serve your political party. If you're going to advocate for power, advocate for power. If you have a thirst for conquest, go ahead thirst for conquest. But see, what we're not going to do is confuse it and cause people who have a genuine desire for a relationship with God or could have a relationship with God for them to not be able to see him as a safe space for them. Because we have people like Matt who will say things in the middle of of probably being the most divided we've ever been as a nation since maybe the 60s and say something to the effect of colonization, 
was a good thing. It was a noble thing. So how about this, Matt? Pull out your Bible, look at the 10 commandments, compare it to the history of colonization. And then when you're done, you tell us how it was noble. You see, as human beings, we all need to repent and let colonization serve as a reason as to why we need Jesus because we all have the capability to have extreme levels of cognitive dissonance where we swear that we love him, but yet an entire side of us is filled with evil, darkness, thirst for power, greed, and in many ways, blood. We all need to repent and we all need to separate ourselves from the sins of our ancestors. And the scriptures say what the enemy intended for evil God will use for good, but never get it twisted. Just because God has the ability to take evil and make good out of it does not mean that it wasn't evil. And if you're not able to make that distinction, you have a lot more praying to do and you need a lot more Jesus than you currently have. All right, guys, wish you the best.